WEAF, New York. 8.30 p.m., B-U-L-O-V-A, Boulevard Watch Time. See the 17 Jewel, Priscilla. A pack of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon cost you less. So why not always Avalon with Avalon? Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon Time, featuring radio's red-headed ragamuffin Richard Red Skelton with Dick Todd, Edna Stilwell, Bud Hercules Vandover, the Avalon Chorus, and Bob Strong and his orchestra, opening the program with O oh, Johnny O. Oh. gentlemen, the first time you try an Avalon cigarette, you'll probably say, the price of quality cigarettes is coming down. Yes, friends, just one trial is all that's necessary to tell you union-made Avalons are unsurpassed in quality. In fact, you couldn't get finer quality tobaccos in any other cigarette, regardless of price, regardless of brand. That's why you'd never guess Avalons cost you less three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. Remember that price, won't you? Three to five cents less than other popular price brands. A real saving. Truly, friends, any cigarette that offers you so much certainly deserves a trial. Why not get a pack of Avalons tonight? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that all-year-round Santa Claus... The man who always has long white whiskers on his jokes, Red Shelton. <laughs> Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And Dell, that was a very unwise remark for you to make at this time of the year. You know, present, present, present. <laughs> Oh, yes, you were doing your Christmas shopping yesterday, weren't you? Yeah, Ed? how did you know? I saw you in Woolworth. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I only went in there to buy some stickers for Christmas packages. I licked so many stickers, Bill, that when I passed the stationery store, the envelope uh, flaps waved at my tongue. <laughs> I didn't mind that so much, but my tongue kept waving back. <laughs> That's it. Getting to be a beautiful friendship. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You had a lot. Of, you had a lot of packages to wrap, eh, Red? Oh yeah, but that was nothing. When I got to the post office, it was so mobbed that the airmail service was rushed. Oh, it was terrible. And they were using every possible form of airmail carriers. <laughs> no kidding. While I was standing in the line with a big package, a pigeon walked up to me and he says, "Where's it going, bud?" <laughs> The charges on the package was 97 cents, so I just took a dollar bill in the in his beak. 
And uh, told him to keep the change, you know, very big shot like me. <laughs> he must have been very happy about it, the tip, because when he flew away, he kept saying, cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> That's really a canary joke, but I put it in there. We needed a laugh. <laughs> we still need one. <laughs> I finally got to the stamp. Uh, finally got to the stamp window, and it was so crowded that I, uh, crowded I couldn't see what I was doing. Then, as I licked the stamp, Washington looked up at me and he says, "On the other side, slob." <laughs> By this time, I was so knocked out that I went to sleep right by the window with my mouth open. And a nearsighted old lady came up and stuck a 50-cent stamp on my tongue, and I woke up the next morning in Detroit. <laughs> Hi, Skelton. Oh, oh, Dick Todd, ladies and gentlemen, our singing star. Say, have you got a little Christmas carol for tonight, Dick? Well, not exactly. I'm singing I Thought About You. Oh, that's very nice. I'm crazy about carols. <laughs> Eddie Lamar's ain't bad either. <clears throat> Sing, Dick. <laughs> We said we were through, but what did I do? I thought about you, thought about you. Seems that I read, or somebody said, that out of sight is out of mind. Maybe that's so, but I tried to go and leave you behind. What did I find? I took a trip on a train And I thought about you I passed a shadowy lane And I thought about you Two or three cars parked under the stars Winding stream Moon shining down On some little town And with each beam Same old dream At every stop that we made So I thought about you But when I pulled down the shade then I really felt blue I peeked through the crack And looked at the track The one going back to you And what did I do? I thought about you was very nice, Dick, and to show you just how much I really enjoyed it, I'm going to give you a Christmas present right now. <laughs> Here it is, Dick. <clears throat> oh, Red, you shouldn't have done it. Oh, go on. Open the box. Take a look at it. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah? <laughs> Gosh, I've always wanted a pin cushion. <laughs> <laughs> but not that much. <laughs> well, that's my little gift to you, Dick. Say, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, you got anything you want to say to me, Dick? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Gosh, I didn't get you anything, Brad. No? I feel like a heel. Oh, don't be silly, gee. I didn't expect anything from you, Dick. Gosh, you don't have to feel like a heel. <laughs> you heel. <laughs> well, I may as well give the rest of the cats their presents while they got time to go out and do a little shopping. <laughs> oh, witness. What is it, Mr. Skelton? And honest, I didn't expect anything. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're going to get it anyhow. Here, i got a surprise for you. Put your hand in my pocket. There. Yeah, what do you feel? A big roll of bills. That's the wrong pocket. <laughs> Here it is. That's for you, isn't it? Oh, how lovely. A watch with phony diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Those aren't phony diamonds. Look at those big red stones. They're phony rubies. <laughs> Oh, it isn't the gift, Mr. Skelton. It's the thought that reflects the character of the giver. Yes. Does the watch work? It... Does the watch work? Certainly the watch works. Just have to shake it a little. Oh. Well, then I'll shake it. Right. <laughs> you see, it has a Swiss movement. A movement? <laughs> Sounds like a retreat. Yeah. 
Well, before I forget it, Edna, here's a little present I got for your mother. What, another can opener? Yeah. Now, I didn't give your mother a can opener last year. That was two years ago. <laughs> last year, I gave her a very lovely present, and those were genuine ermine garters. Genuine ermine. Uh, My mother dropped a head of lettuce on the floor, and the garters jumped down and ate it. <laughs> Those were rabbit garters. They were not rabbit garters. Well, then how come my mother has six pairs now? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll just quit stalling around. What'd you get me for Christmas? <clears throat> oh, well, put your hand in my pocket. Okay. Hey, you haven't got any pockets. Well, Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. <laughs> Well, that's two presents I wasted this year. Ark, ark, Merry Christmas, throw me a fish. Ark, ark, Merry Christmas, throw me a fish. Hey, who are you? Oh, just a Christmas seal. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, come back here. Hey, I know who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a surprise for you. A new member of Avalon, Avalon Time, and he's going to be on the show every week. And here he is, that slap-happy, grandpappy, Cliff Arquette. Well, hi, diddle diddle kids. <laughs> well, Grandpappy, welcome to Avalon Time. You know, I heard you on the Rudy Valley program in the Hall of Fun, and I think you're swell. Uh, well, Reggie boy, I heard you on the radio, and you're a killer yourself. <laughs> well, thanks, Grandpappy. Gee, but I think you're much funnier than I am. <laughs> no, no, Reggie boy. You get more laughs than I ever dreamed of. <laughs> Shall I turn out the lights so you two can be alone? <laughs> Well, Reggie, I just dropped in to give you this little Christmas present for me. Yeah, it's a sweater. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, don't tell anybody, but I crocheted it myself. <laughs> Gee, Grandpappy, that's, well, a beautiful traffic cop sweater. A pullover. <laughs> and it's... <laughs> oh, it's cute, Reggie. Yeah. And to think you made it with your own little hand. <laughs> Say, wait a minute. What are those two big bumps on the front of it? Well, those are the baggy knees. It started out to be long underwear. <laughs> Pretty funny, ain't it? <laughs> hey, yeah, that'd be so funny now. <laughs> well, I got to run along now. Hi, diddle diddle, Reggie boy. So long, Grandpappy. See you next week now. <laughs> oh, gee, Grandpappy Arquette. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Strong and his orchestra will play Jimmy Fiddler's theme song, Jingle Bell. Thank you. 
Friends, did you hear what old Scrooge said on Christmas Eve when he stopped to buy a pack of cigarettes? Well, the store clerk greeted him with... Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas, Santa Claus. Bah, humbug. <laughs> Just give me a pack of cigarettes. Those right there with the silver letters on the outside. Silver. Money. <laughs> Money. <laughs> okay, sir, puss. Hey, you got some change coming. Those are Avalons you got. They cost three to five cents less per pack. Three to five cents less? Mm hmm. I get money back? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> there is a Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, friends. <laughs> that saving on Avalon cigarettes amounts to many, many extra dollars every year. And it's just like getting a gift of that much money, too. Because judging by the quality, you'd never guess Avalon's cost you less. Three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. They're guaranteed unsurpassed in quality. So the next time, try Avalon and save the difference. Well, that was the best commercial I ever heard. <laughs> Just to show you how much I appreciated it, here's your Christmas present. Oh, gee. well, thanks, Red. <laughs> Gosh, just what I wanted, too. A pair of riding breeches. Yeah. They're the latest style, too, Dell. Riding breeches with a built-in Schlong's liniment. Liniment. <laughs> <laughs> Absorbing Junior. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, gee, it's too bad that I didn't get something for you, Red. Uh, huh? I was going to get you a saddle for Christmas, but they didn't have your size. Don't give me that stuff. You buy saddles to fit a horse. Oh, so that's your size. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's forget the whole thing. Do you ever buy forget me? What is it? Don't feel badly because you didn't get any presents. What? A little bird just told me that Santa Claus is coming to see you in person tonight. Uh, Santa Claus is coming up here to see me? Oh. <laughs> if that's Santa Claus, he better have his reindeer's valves ground. <laughs> well, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, and he's red to... Wait a minute, are you Santa Claus? Well, I'm not the good humor man with high blood pressure. <laughs> Hercules, are you, if you're supposed to be Santa Claus, where's your whiskers? Whiskers? No. Oh, my goodness. I thought that breakfast food tasted flat this morning. <laughs> Look, the next time you eat shredded wheat, you better put your whiskers up in a snood. <laughs> Say, um, I heard you drive up just now. Tell me, do you wait, uh, whip your reindeers to make them pull a sled? Oh, perish the thought, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't make those poor reindeers pull that sled. Well, how do you get anywhere? We all jump on the sled and go belly whopping. <laughs> See, that must be fun, Hanky. Fun? <laughs> Say, Mr. Kelton, did you ever have a reindeer jump on your back horn, Spurs? <laughs> Well, must be kind of nice playing Santa Claus, Herky, except for going down those dirty chimneys. <laughs> oh, it sucks me. <laughs> oh, Santa Claus, you really reached down the bag for that one. <laughs> what do you need for Christmas? Some new jokes. But tell me, Herky, um, is it a lot of fun going down those chimneys? <laughs> well, I went down one last night and it was simply horrible. Why? The darn fool forgot to put the fire out. <laughs> Oh, you mean you got a hot foot? Well, that wasn't the seat of my trouble. <laughs> well, here you are, kiddo. The whole cast chipped in to get you this lovely present. Oh, swell. Gee, I knew they wouldn't forget me. Wait a minute. This package is awful sticky. Well, I didn't have any, any strings, so I wrapped it in fly paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what it is. <clears throat> oh, what a beautiful gift. Like it, huh? An egg beater. <laughs> Gee, now I can have an omelet every Thursday morning. Yeah, with the eggs you lay every Wednesday night. <laughs> well, I gotta go now, Mr. Skelton. You see, I have to deliver some presents to my little friends out in Hollywood. Yeah? See, there's Shirley Temple, Jane Weathers, and Baby Snook. Kirky, are you a friend of Baby Snook? Am I? Why, I've known Baby Snooks ever since she was 45. <laughs> well, goodbye, Rusty. <laughs> There's a little old church that's covered with moss Where I held your hand tenderly I often go there to gaze at the cross 
And dream that you'll come back to me How I'd love to hear the organ In the chapel in the moonlight While we're strolling down the aisle Where roses and twine How I'd love to hear you whisper In the chapel in the moonlight That the love light in your eyes Forever will shine Encore singing Chapel in the Moonlight. Hey, Dick, how come you always sing songs about chapels in the moonlight? Well, you know, Red, when you're with a girl, a chapel always go for moonlight. Yeah. <laughs> That's very funny. Now, allow me to give you another Christmas present, Dick. Here. <laughs> oh, why, Red, you dropped it. Yeah, leave it lay, Dick. It's your option. <laughs> And now we come to our slice of life. You set the scene, Dell. Okay, Red. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, women are more and more taking the places of men in business. Tonight's slice of life shows what happens when the wife works and the husband takes care of the house. As the scene opens, the husband is alone in the parlor. Knit two, purl two, drop one, drop kick, touchdown. <laughs> I wonder where Edna is. She's never this late. Oh, why does she worry me like this? All day I've had a terrible feeling that something was going to happen to her. And I had the same feeling the day they hung Dick Tracy in the well. <laughs> oh, she could at least call me. Oh, for goodness sake, another salesman. Well, I won't go to the door. I don't care if you knock your knuckles off. I'm... Hey, take it easy there. Well, guess you left your door open. Good afternoon, madam. <laughs> Good afternoon, madam. Uh, madam, well, wait a minute. Don't let this apron fool you. Oh, <laughs> very funny, sir. Very funny. Yeah. Now, I have here... I what? don't want any. <laughs> Customers always buy. <right. laughs> yes. Never try to force a sale. Get your foot out of the door. Uh, that's right. Keep smiling, sir. Let go of my apron. I have a real bargain here. Get your hands from off my throat. Look, bud. Look, bud. I'm trying to get an education by selling magazines. Yeah? If you buy four magazines, you'll help me through college. I don't want any. Well, uh, why don't you buy two and help me through high school? <laughs> now, with every copy of a real American magazine, we give away absolutely free a full-blooded Indian. Yeah. I can't use it. Well, how about the Home Companion magazine? With every copy, I personally brush your teeth, comb your hair, and carry out your ashes once a month. Get out. <laughs> I, no, get out! I said, uh, Get out! <laughs> Darn house to house salesman. Give him an inch, he'll take a foot and shove it through the door. <laughs> and slamming my door that way. <gasps> I better look in the oven. If he made my cake drop, I'll scream. Hello, well, it's about time you got here. Where have you been? Well, I had to work late at the office. He gets every night the same thing. <laughs> now don't get excited, dear. And how about dinner? That's all you ever think about. I'm tired cooking for you. 
It's no fun opening 30 or 40 cans every day. I'm getting apple, it's rest. Why don't you let me do the... Why don't you do the housework and let me go out and get a job? Oh, now, dear, a man's place is in the hall. Oh. Now, how about something to eat? Dinner is burned. <laughs> what happened? There was a fire at the delicatessen. <laughs> well, fix anything, dear. I've had a hard day today. You had a hard day. How about me? You know what I go through with these neighbors? <laughs> That Mr. Jones makes the... He's such a cat. We were both hanging our laundry in the yard this morning, and he looked... He looked over at mine, and he says, Hmm, tattletail gray. <laughs> oh, I hate him. Oh, stop whining. Get dressed, and we'll go out to dinner. Get dressed? You know I haven't a thing to wear. <laughs> What's the matter with your gray suit? Well, that's the only rag I've got to my back. Don't I deserve more? I slave for you. Wash dishes. Look at my manicure. Run. I'm sorry, dear. I know you're a good husband. Darling. What is it, Richard? Well, I was looking in the paper today, and I saw the cutest new suit. Only seventeen fifty with 14 pair of pants and a bicycle. <laughs> we can't afford it, Richard. Look at these bills of yours. Kidney plasters, 80 cents. Aspirin, 30 cents. Five dollars for a tooth extraction. That's $6.10 for your own selfish pleasure. No, no wonder you're always running low on your allowance. Well, how do you expect me to run a house on $20? Look at Mr. Smith down the street. His wife gives him $30 a week. Well, Mr. Smith, I'd give him 30 myself. Yeah. <laughs> you brute. You, you, you big brute. <laughs> My father always said you had shifty eyes. <laughs> Fighting with me this way and at this time. Why, Richard. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course, you wouldn't notice what I was doing when you came in. I'm sorry, dear. What were you doing? Knitting. Knitting? <laughs> Knitting what? Little sweaters. <laughs> Darling, do you mean? Yes. Our police dog is getting to have rickies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you live in a city or state which has recently imposed additional taxes on cigarettes, here's a way to get your cigarettes for pre-tax prices. Switch to Avalon cigarettes. You see, Avalon's regular price is three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. And that saving brings your cigarette cost down to the old lower price, the pre-tax price. Yes, friends, no matter where you live, union-made Avalon save you money and at the same time guarantees you unsurpassed quality. Avalons are truly an unusual cigarette and certainly worth a trial. Get a pack tonight. Gentlemen, before we say good night, we won't be able to see you before next Wednesday. Wednesday, and on behalf of our sponsor, the cast, and myself, we want to wish you a merry Christmas. And I hope Santa Claus leaves in all your stockings the things that you've been hitting for all week. So until next week, we say Merry Christmas and goodbye now. Well, friends, we hope that you've enjoyed our show and be with us next Wednesday night at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation again presents Red Skelton, Slap Happy, Grandpappy, Cliff Arquette, Dick Todd, Edna Stilwell, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and the entire gang in Avalon time. This is Del King speaking, reminding you that during the week when you ask for Avalon cigarettes... Don't forget your change. So why not always Avalon Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon cost only 10 cents plus city or state tax.
Pipe smokers, attention. For the very finest in pipe smoking enjoyment, try Sir Walter Raleigh, the quality pipe tobacco of America. Sir Walter Raleigh is the largest selling pipe tobacco in the Army, in the Navy, on American college campuses. In fact, everywhere you find men who know quality smoking. And here's a mighty fine Christmas gift suggestion. A big one-pound vacuum-sealed tin of Sir Walter Raleigh. It'll make a big hit with any pipe smoker. This is the National Broadcasting Company. W-E-A-F, New York. 9 p.m. B-U-L-O-V-A, Bulova Watch Time. <laughs> 